PM comes with a development environment. So f for you to um, customize automation packages or for you to build your own automation process, let's say you have a process where you're provisioning a service to your end user and as part of that, um, those steps, you need to um, allocate a virtual machine uh, from a resource pool and uh, you need to install an operating system and as part of that, those steps, once you've installed the operating system, you need to uh, allocate some storage to that machine, some extra storage for applications. Then you need to go ahead and do some firewall configuration and some network configuration. So all these various building blocks may be required to provision that service. You can use this development environment called the APDE to actually build that solution. So here I've got um, one I prepared earlier. Those uh, of you who are um, from the UK and watch Blue Peter will be familiar with that phrase. Here's one I prepared earlier. So this is the uh, once you launch the APDE, this has been configured to uh, um, connect to our Tivoli Perugia Manager server. And uh, this is the default workspace. And here we've got a number of views. So at the bottom of the screen we have automation packages. If I double click to expand, we can see a list of all the automation packages that are available in our environment. As we see new releases of, of TPM, this list um, tends to increase. I'm running a, um, an older version of TPM here, 7.1. 7.2 has um, many more automation packages. Let's have a look at what the automation package for um, the IBM HTTP server contains. So this automation package contains a number of workflows. So the value highlighted is a workflow. This is a workflow to install HTTP. This is a workflow to start HTTP. These groupings here are logically grouping those workflows here. So here there's a, a device model called software installation. And here all the workflows related to software installation are logically grouped together. So to learn about the environment and, and to learn what's available, the APDE is a very useful resource and when you double click a workflow you'll see the source code and once you are programming your own workflows I always say um, to my customers the the best programmer is a lazy programmer let's look at re reusing uh, existing solutions out there so before you start coding hundreds of lines have a look at uh, um, the existing uh, environment look at existing workflows there may be a workflow in an automation package that does exactly um, what you want to do have a look at the IBM Opal site and uh, see if you can reuse or just call workflows from Opal. So when you are working with um, TPM automation, there'll be a fair amount of integration work potentially. So we've got a list here. We have a list of automation packages. Next to the automation package tab, we have a, the uh, the workflows tab. And again, this workflows tab is showing us all the workflows we have. And there's a predictive text search here. So when I just have an empty filter this is going to show us all our workflows available in the TPM database now here we can search for the workflow I ran earlier in the TPM GUI default device execute command and to look at the implementation of this workflow i.e. the source code we can double click and you'll see the source code here let's run this workflow so here I've got some parameters uh, already filled in. So we have the same parameters we entered in or in the TPM GUI. And I'll press Run Workflow. Now this um, application or automation package development environment, it is Eclipse based. And this could be installed on a remote machine. Um, and that remote machine just needs to have database connectivity to your TPM database. And here we can see what's happened is our command has succeeded. What has what the command done? Well, it's ran this workflow, default device execute command, with these input parameters. And the output parameters, or the output um, uh, uh, of that particular command, is stored in this return result. And we can see the, uh, the same output we saw in, in the GUI earlier on. So this is the, uh, the return result. This is uh, request ID 11621. So if I go back to our interface, go back to the start center, 
look at provisioning workflow status. And here we can see the 11621 was the deployment request that I ran from the automation package. So here we have an audit trail of every single workflow, whether it succeeded with a green, we like green squares. Sometimes workflows will fail um, if you've entered wrong parameters in or you've got a, a syntax error. And sometimes workflows that are in progress will be shown as, a, as in progress in the interface. So for your development, you'll be using this uh, environment uh, for building automation packages. Now your automation package, you will develop as a new project. So here we've got a sample project and each project has a directory structure. There's a very important file here called the tcdriver.xml, which um, contains metadata about your uh, automation package. And here there'll be references to workflows that have been defined in this automation package. So here, as we scroll down, we'll see under the item stanza, we have a number of workflows that are actually um, have been defined in this project. So the, the workflow file ends in the .wk extension. As I scroll down, we'll see. As I scroll down, we'll see a number of um, item blocks, where each item consists of a a workflow reference. And these workflows are logically grouped into. I mentioned the phrase device driver, device models is in effect the same thing. And the, here we've defined a device model, for example, called VMware Host Platform Virtual Machine Management. So all the workflows which are related to workflow um, or, uh, virtual machine management are referred to inside here. You want to make sure this, this file is, is valid and correct and you don't want to uh, press delete like this and introduce syntax errors inside there. Now this file is automatically modified when you create a new workflow in the automation package and um, development environment. The workflows are defined here and the workflows when we navigate we can double click and now we can start uh, doing out editing. So I can type in a this is a new comment. So here we're those of you who are software developers and, and, and love programming like myself, then uh, you'll find this a, a wonderful new world and new syntax of uh, uh, implementing solutions in your environment. So here this is the, the native workflow development language. Maybe we'll do a video cast later on to show you some of the advanced techniques in this programming language. All the best practices of software development apply here. Um, naming conventions, modular programming, commenting your source code, using white space, um, error handling and so on, and of course testing. And here in this tool we can, uh, once we've saved our workflow, we can then test the workflow, workflow by pressing play and this workflow just like a function call expects a number of parameters okay so you can use this tool as the the platform to test and debug once your workflows have been uh, developed we can then build the automation package <coughs> through this tool okay uh, I'm not going to use that option. So we can uh, build an automation package and then we can install the automation package using the command I showed you earlier, the TC driver manager command. <clears throat> now when you are running shell scripts on your TPM server, you will always see two forms of the shell script. One script will end in .sh and the other ends in .cmd. Now depending on the platform your TPM server is installed on, you will use a specific script. So on Windows TPM servers, you will use the the .cmd script. On Unix and Linux TPM servers, you'll use the .sh command. If you're not sure how to use this command, in, in this case, you can just type in the command and press return, and you'll see a nice usage. So there's a number of arguments to this particular command. There's a um, and for each argument, there's a the, the full argument like force install driver, or we can use the shorthand FID, listing which drivers have been installed, or automation packages which have been installed, using list orstra, or you can use the the L option. Oops. So if you look at this uh, directory structure here, a number of shell scripts inside there. Now my installation is using the default installation directory, opt ibm tpm 